Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. And this course module is on personal computer connectors, common ports. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host through this module where we're going to talk about the requirements from CompTIA A plus certification course 220-601, section 1.1, where we need to identify the names, purposes, and characteristics of ports and cables. We're going to go through quite a few in this module. We're going to talk about USB. We'll look at parallel ports. We'll go through what serial and firewire, some of these RJ specifications refer to. And then we'll finish up with some PS2 or mini DIN connections. Finally, some multimedia cables. So going through quite a connection. The idea is that when you look at the back of a computer, what are all these ports? What is everything that's happening on that motherboard? So very often we'll be looking at the back of a system and you'll see all kinds of different connections, different colors. And you're going to need to know as an A-plus certified professional what those are and what they might plug into. Especially if you're returning a computer and putting it back on someone's desk, you have to plug everything back in. Where does it go? So this module will help you understand a little more of that. Let's start with a very common one these days, something called Universal Serial Bus, or USB. You very often hear it referred to as USB. Not many people are asking about a universal serial bus, but that's what it stands for. And we've got four listed here. This is the one you very often see on the back of a motherboard, this Type A plug. That's called a Type A specification. And it plugs in usually to a Type A receptacle that's on a motherboard or on another device. On the other end of that wire is another different kind of plug usually. It's usually a type B plug. This is this large square-like connection. And I have some devices in my studio that use the type B plug. And there's also this mini B plug. You'll see it a lot as well on devices. I've got a couple that are in my office. I've got my BlackBerry. My BlackBerry uses that mini B connection. You can see it plugs into this little one. That larger square connection is used on the, the voice recording system, the audio recorder that we're using right now. And it's got this USB connection on it, this larger sized connector there. So it holds a lot better that larger size. You often see the larger connectors on some of those systems that are bigger so that you'll, you're sure you have a good connection on those USB components. If you've ever worked with printers over the last number of years, you may have seen this connector. It's a parallel connector. You don't see it a lot on the latest printers, but the older printers do still have this parallel connection. And they use something called a DB25 plug. This is this 25-pin connector. We'll talk more about what that DB25 specification is referring to in a different module. But you'll see on the back of the motherboard, it's usually this red or magenta colored connector with these 25 female connections. You can see the pins are plugging into those female connections on the back of the motherboard. And so that's where usually we're plugging in this parallel connector, almost always a printer these days. Although through the years, we've even used the parallel connectors to plug into fax machines or even transfer files. But you don't really see that much any longer. Some of the newer systems, newer laptops, for instance, it's such a big connector, a large component, that you don't even see it on some of the newer systems any longer. If you are plugging into a printer and you're plugging into that parallel port, on the other end of the cable, what you'll very often see is something called a Centronics connection. This is this funny looking connector here. And this is how it looks on the printer itself. Notice it's got these little connections on the side. So when you plug it in, they will latch on to it. And that way, if the printer moves around, printers are very often moving or you've had to move them from place to place, that connector won't accidentally fall out because it really is just slid right into there. They don't really have a, a very solid connection there unless you put those little hooks around it. And that way, you're certain that it's not going to come off. These days, printers are running USB. This is a printer that actually has both. You've got a Centronics connection if you have an old parallel connection. But if your printer has a USB connection, you can plug in the Type A in your computer. And there's the USB Type B connection on the back of this printer. So this one happens to allow you to use either type of connection. Another type of connector you'll see on a motherboard is usually a serial connector. And that's this nine pin. Usually it's a male connection coming out of the back of a computer. Sometimes you'll see larger 25 pin serial connections. So I put a cable up here that actually show both of these. If you ever see one, it's either nine pin or 25 pin. This could be serial. Well, now you're starting to see kind of the challenge we've always had through the years is that this 25 pin end of a serial cable looks very similar in fact, exactly the same as this 25-pin parallel connection. 
Parallel signals and serial signals are completely different. These two devices are not compatible with each other. So it didn't make a lot of sense to have a 25-pin connection. That's why the serial these days is very often a 9-pin connection. Very few devices are using a 9-pin male connection. So every time you see that, it's probably a serial connection. Serial connections are very often used for devices that will uh, that communicate, like a modem uses a serial connection. Some of the old mice, before there was a mouse port, everything plugged into the serial connection. So you'll see sometimes in the really old systems, the end of the mouse has this 9-pin connector. That's what it's plugging into is that serial port. One of the newer types of connectors these days is something called FireWire. FireWire is a term that was coined by Apple. It really caught on because the actual name of this port is the IEEE 1394. Well, that's not very catchy, so FireWire makes a lot of sense to call it that. If you have any equipment that's from Sony, you may see that it's called an i.link, iLink. Uh, you can plug in an iLink connection into a FireWire connection into a 1394 connection. It's all exactly the same thing. It's just different names. It's funny how we do that to ourselves in our industry. The FireWire connections are nice because they support high speeds. In fact, here's some connectors down here. There are two types of FireWire today. There's a FireWire 400, and that runs at 400 megabits per second. And there's a FireWire 800. You can see the FireWire 800 9-pin connection here. FireWire 800 never really caught on as much as people would hope. So you'll very often see much more FireWire 400 than you see 800. Some systems will support both, though. You can see there's not only a 6-pin FireWire 400 here at the bottom, there's also a 4-pin connection as well. And that's the 4-pin connection that's on this Canon camera that we happen to be using right now to record this video. So I plug in usually this connection out of my camera, and I plug in directly into my computer, which has a FireWire connection on my laptop on this 4-pin FireWire cable. And I'm able to transfer the video onto that system and edit it so that you're able to see it. And FireWire is what makes all of that happen. If you work at all with communication systems, you'll certainly run into one or both of these different kinds of connections. We have on this screen an RJ11 connection and an RJ45 connection. These are the ends of the cables that you would expect to see. RJ11, the smaller four-pin connector, very often used in voice communication phone lines, analog phone lines in the United States. It's also in digital systems that you'd see in many places too. But when you start looking into digital connections and running different types of Ethernet connections, you'll see this 8-pin RJ45 connector. It's a fatter, more, more uh, pins in this connector. And here's what these look like on your computer. This happens to be on a Macintosh where you have both a phone line going in. You can see the little phone there. That's the 4-pin RJ11. And you also see this Ethernet network connection. And that is the 8-pin RJ45. Different systems will use RJ11 and RJ45. It's most commonly seen in the telephone and the Ethernet connection, but that doesn't guarantee that's what it is. Before you plug it in, make sure you know what it is because voltages can run over that connection, and you want to be sure that you don't damage these ports that are on your system when you're plugging into a modem or a network connection. When you start looking at the latest series of keyboards and mice, they use this small connection that we often refer to as a PS2 connection. This is technically a mini DIN connection. We call it a PS2 connection because these first became popular on a series of computers that was created by IBM, which was called the IBM PS2 line of computers. And the PS2 name just kind of stuck. These are mini DINs, and you can see they look and really are pinned exactly alike. This happens to be a mouse with this white connection here. It's one of the older mice before they started standardizing on the colors. And you can see this keyboard purple color is here, and they look exactly the same. So uh, one of the things we did was make common connectors for both of these. Unfortunately, if you're trying to work around a computer and it's in the dark and you can't see into the back, You'll very often plug a keyboard into a mouse connection and a mouse connection to a keyboard connection. It's nice to have the colors there to kind of keep you straight a lot of the times. So you can double check if you turn your computer on and your keyboard's not working and your mouse isn't working, that may be a good reason why. But these are very small connections, and it's nice to have those in the back. These days, the keyboard mice tend to also use USB, but you'll still see these connectors, at least one of those, on some of the newer systems. If you ever start working with audio in your systems, I certainly have a lot of these in my office, is this 1 8 inch jack connection. This is a very small connector. It's the one that you'd see on the end of a headphone, end of a microphone. And they plug into these different kinds of jacks on the back of your motherboard so that you can plug speakers in, you can plug a microphone in. And you need to make sure to check your documentation of what color goes where so that you're not plugging the speakers into the mic jack or the mic 
into the speaker jack. Those will not work when you uh, move them back and forth, but they are very small connectors, so it's nice to have those in the back of the motherboard. They don't take up a lot of room. If you have somebody that's doing a lot with music on their system, they will probably have a connection like this on the back of their system. This is a MIDI connection or a musical instrument digital interface. These are larger DIN connections. You can see that these round five pin connections here. And I've got a, a MIDI hub here so you can start to see what they look like. Usually you're plugging in a keyboard or another type of musical instrument into this. And it's a very standardized way to transfer digital signals between musical devices. So if you're ever working at all in the musical side of things, you see a lot of different standardizations around MIDI. And you can buy a lot of separate MIDI hubs and MIDI interfaces for your computer. This happens to be one that plugs in via USB. So if you have a USB port on your computer, you can extend that out so that you can also have MIDI connections going into it. And the last type of multimedia connector I'd like to show you is one called SPDIF. You'll hear it referred to as SPDIF just because it's got this funny name, which stands for Sony Philips Digital Interconnect Format, which is a long name just so you can send digital audio out of your system. There's usually two types of connectors. On this motherboard, there's not only the coaxial copper connection for the digital audio signal. There's also a fiber connection as well. It's got this little flap over it so that dust doesn't go inside of it. This is the end of a fiber connector on the SPDIF type connection. Very often you'll see uh, audio components, high-end audio components, or even mixers will have these types of connectors on them so that you can send very clear digital audio that can't be affected by any type of analog noises. In review, we've gone through quite a few different types of connectors. We've not only seen the traditional USB and serial and parallel, but we've also seen some of the higher speed firewire and some of the RJ11 and RJ45 network type connections. And finally, we ended up looking at the PS2 connections and even some multimedia connections for being able to send MIDI and audio signals into your computer through those multimedia ports. For more information on all of the videos that we have, if you'd like to comment on any videos or watch any of the free series of CompTIA A-plus videos, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.